Well, hello, folks, and welcome to another fine episode of Jeff Drawing. I'm Jeff. I'm the artist. And today I am drawing former governor of California and America's favorite action star, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, You must forgive me if I feel a little out of sorts. I just uh, sat in front of a microphone for 10 minutes uh, talking about this drawing already. And then I realized that I had not hit record. So I'm going to try to remember some of the stuff I said and uh, say it all over again. And hopefully I can do a better job. Um, But yeah, I'm drawing Arnold. It's a caricature. um, And this is no ordinary Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger as a loaf of brown swagger and if you don't know what brown swagger is it's a strange uh sort of a mealy pasty meat i guess i don't know it's like a loaf and it comes in sort of a a plastic skin of sorts Uh, and you cut it open and you spread it on whatever you need to spread it on i've never i've never eaten it before and um but i've heard of it and one of the uh one of the places I heard of it was in the film Last Action Hero, which is one of my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger films. And so that's what this is referencing. Uh, there's a part in the movie uh, when Arnold, uh, playing Jack Slater, who is the movie character played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, he comes out of the movie world and he introduces himself as Arnold Braunschweiger. Because even though... He is Austrian, as Jack Slater. He still does not know how to remember or say the Austrian name Schwarzenegger. Um, and so that's the that's a joke. That's a little gag in the film that I will that I always remember. And so I drew this. I drew it for my podcast uh, or a promotional image for my podcast um, that I put on Facebook. You know, every episode we like to promote it on Facebook and social media, and uh, I'll do like a little, little funny drawing for it. If you watched my previous video, I did one of Wolverine, and this time this is for our Last Action Hero episode, and I thought it would be rather creepy and weird to put Arnold Schwarzenegger's face uh, on a brown swagger. Um, it's rather d- disturbing, I suppose, kind of akin to cracking open an egg and finding a baby chick inside not not quite fully developed and so in this scenario i suppose you've opened up cut open this uh you know the plastic skin of the brown swagger the wrapper and inside was a not fully developed arnold schwarzenegger um but he's happy to see you and uh, he's happy to hear that you enjoy his movie Uh, last action hero and i should talk a bit about my podcast real quick um it's called questionable taste Uh, i do it with my pal dylan um we defend movies that you hate and uh i know not a lot of people really hate last action hero i think a lot of people actually really like it but at the time that it came out it was received uh rather poorly it didn't do very good at the box office there's a whole story behind it um and uh, we just thought it was worth revisiting. It's kind of one of those movies that uh, nobody really talks about as much. You know, there's a lot of older films from the 80s and 90s that people um, that have kind of fell, fell into the cult status that people always still talk about and remember. And I think this one is one that definitely is deserving of that cult status. It, it's a, just a, a really cool movie. Like, I thought, oh, I was a kid. I liked it. Maybe I'm not going to like it again as an adult. Um, I think I had watched it as a teenager and still liked it, and now I watched it as a 32-year-old man, and it still holds up. It's better than a lot of action comedies uh, that you'll see now. I mean, it's directed by the guy who did Die Hard, so you can't go wrong there. Um, But yeah, I'm drawing this caricature in Manga Studio, and I often talk about Manga Studio and how much I enjoy it. I just enjoy the way the brush works. It kind of has this little smoothing post-correction effect that isn't uh, intrusive. It doesn't change the line uh, like uh, you know Photoshop or I mean Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator does that. It sort of like corrects it and, and 
you draw one way and then it says no you actually want to draw like this and it can be frustrating at times um, and with Photoshop you kind of have to draw really quickly but with uh, Manga Studio the cool thing is is when you you turn the number up you can change this little number on your post correction and you can uh, take your time you don't have to do these quick strokes to make these these uh, smooth looking ink lines um, you can actually go kind of slow and, and it, um, it will make sure that it doesn't get all your shaky movements in your hand the only downside to that I think for, for me personally when drawing this is that um, some of my arcs maybe kind of comes out a little more stiff now um, there used to be sort of like when I had to do a line stroke that was really quick it had this fluidity to it and this like sense of movement and just a lot of energy uh, whereas I don't get it when I'm being so precise and so careful um, like I like I can be in, in Manga Studio uh, when drawn and uh, so I've maybe lost a little bit of that I'm kind of working on sort of getting that back uh, in Manga Studio. I do like drawing in it a lot better, but I but I do want to recover my kind of those lively lines that you get in Photoshop. Um, and yeah, it, I mean it's not quite cheating too. You know the thing about it kind of almost sounds like I'm saying, oh, it smooths out my lines. Uh, you know, like it's it's somehow correcting uh, you know a poorly drawn uh, drawing, but. Uh, this is coming out exactly how I would draw it if I had, you know, if I was using a, a nice ink pen or a brush. It's just that when you're using a tablet that is sort of interpreting your your hand movements and the pressure you're putting on the pen, uh, you know, digitally and putting it into the computer and you're using a piece of software, I think that, you know, it's easy for it to read like little minor shakes and minor movements that your hand has. and. Uh, the computer and the, and the software it, it works really nice when it can it can remove those um, for whatever reason when you're doing that on paper you kind of have a tactile surface the ink kind of flows out of the pen a certain way and you don't quite have that you also have sort of it's a little easier sometimes you know you can flip your paper around all crazy and stuff I can flip the canvas around if you have a Cintiq I think they have like a little uh, Axis, you can spin the actual <coughs> tablet monitor on and, and, and kind of simulate that. But I think that um, for the most part, Manga Studio it handles it, it, it's like an improvement on uh, digital drawing in the way that it handles that stuff. Well, that's it for me, everyone. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. I think uh, next time I might do something a little different for my next video. I'm not sure yet. Might do some kind of portfolio or behind the scenes thing. Um, kind of feel like I'm running out of things to say with these uh, these quick, you know, these voiceovers. So uh, it'd be fun to kind of change it up. But uh, I really appreciate everybody watching. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That'd be great. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Milkman Jeff. Jeff Mornard on Facebook. And Jeff Morin on Tumblr. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll post a picture in the description. Or post this picture in the description so you can take a look at it up close. And uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Oh, yeah. And QTastePodcast.com. That's where you can listen to the podcast uh, that I spoke of earlier. Uh, but that's it. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.